All right, Shalom, Shalom, Shalom. I want to give all praises to our Heavenly Father, Yahweh, through His only begotten Son, Yahweh Shai. Peace and blessings to you, brothers, and to the daughters of Sarah in the new covenant. And I hope beloved ones are prospering, getting them vitamins and them guadalas, according to the scriptures, not according to the world. And peace and blessings to the small remnant of believing Gentiles in the faith, man. So. I'm going to go ahead and have a quick cut session for you uh, average looking people, men or women, including myself, whoever it may be, okay, that's going inside the Bible, making up doctrines because you're insecure as hell, okay? You don't work out. Most of you don't read. You don't study. You don't take care of your health. Y'all are very, very, very lazy. And I don't give a damn if I sound condescending. How do y'all expect an athlete since I was five or six years old to settle for obese Chewbacca looking as women, military, plain, unseasoned as women? No, bro. And then y'all go to First Timothy 2, all right? Instead of admitting you have a lust problem or a concupiscence problem, you automatically project it on a woman. Y'all got no sauce. You're not smooth. You ain't peaceful. Y'all not on Amazon, Lily, man. You not on Shawty Island because of your ugly-ass environment. Y'all used to ugly-ass women. I'm not talking about women with big eyelashes and wigs. I'm not talking about you Karens, you gothic motherfuckers. I was never talking about y'all, bro. Please dismiss yourself outside the picture. Let's get that context for 1 Timothy 2 and 9 on what modest apparel actually is. And I got the translation, okay, because y'all don't understand anything. Timothy said, okay, and notice how I said Timothy, because you guys love to, just like Paul, he would give you advice or whatever, and you would try to turn it into a law. Thou should not add or take away from the Bible. Thus saith the law. And I want women to be modest in their appearance. They should wear decent and appropriate clothing and not draw attention to themselves by what? By the way they fix their hair. Or by wearing gold or pearls or expensive clothes. That's what Timothy is saying. Is that what the law of Moses say? Did the law... Did the, I'm about to get the law, bro. For women who claim to be devoted to Yahweh should make themselves attractive by the good things they do. He was saying this because you had a bunch of women. Let's go to Matthew 23 just to prove my point. You had a bunch of women that's Pharisees putting their righteousness into outward appearance. I'm going to break everything down. Everything, because you, you Israelites don't understand nothing, dude. Matthew 23. Let's go to. Let me see. Because you, like I said, you men, bro. Y'all googly eye. Y'all got no type of sexual discipline. Y'all not smooth, bro. And your standards are so trash. I'm sorry, bro, but this force and attraction bullshit is not in the Bible for you Israelites, man. This, this is why you guys be falling out the faith, because you don't read or study, man. Let's get that Matthew 23. Matthew 23 and 25. Woe unto you, scribes and Pharisees, hypocrites, including you women, for ye may clean the outside of the cup and of the platter. You think you're holier or modest because you have a big-ass head wrap and a big-ass dress. And I do not find head wraps attractive. And I'm going to get 1 Corinthians 11 for the 3 million time because you Israelites are like circles. You, you, you don't grow. You don't move forward. Okay? But within, they are full of extortion and excess, man. Thou blind Pharisee, including you women, claims first that which is within the cup and platter. Talking about your heart. Timothy is talking about your damn heart, bro. He didn't say it was a sin to wear gold and, and earrings and all that. He never said that. He never said it was a sin to be beautiful. Y'all don't understand nothing that the outside of them may be clean also. Woe unto you, scribes and Pharisees, hypocrites, right? You say one thing and do the opposite. For ye are like unto whited sepulchres, sepulchres, which indeed appear beautiful outward, but are within full of dead men's bones, right? And of all uncleanness, you're proud, okay? 
This is why you got these lame ass Gen Xers talking about don't trust a big button to smile, all kinds of stupid shit. Anybody can have an evil spirit. Anybody can have a demonic, proud spirit. It doesn't matter how they look. That's not that's not deep. That's very surface level. You guys are not critical thinkers or intelligent. Even so, you also outwardly appear righteous unto men. You appear righteous, you damn women. That doesn't mean you're righteous, bro. Your righteousness is through your Howard Shire. Matthew 21 and 31. The Lord said the publicans and harlots will enter into the kingdom of God before you. And most of y'all don't even believe in a new covenant. That's another cut. But within you are full of hypocrisy and iniquity. Hold on, man. Matthew 23 and 5, but all their works they do for to be seen of men. You want to appear righteous. They make broad their phylacteries and enlarge the borders of their garments. Christ warned us about women like y'all. I'm talking and I'm talking to these over-righteous ass women. Right? What does it mean to make broad, bro? That means to enlarge big ass dress. You got a big ass dress. But don't even know that the word dress in the Greek. Or apparel says garment. Y'all don't know what garments are with the fringes and border of the blue. Okay. Phalanxtries. A preservative of safeguard or an amulet. The Jews are Israelites, Judah, Benjamin, and Levi, used this word to describe small strips of parchment on which were written the following passages. Okay, matter of fact. Philanthropies. The Pharisees were accustomed to widen, make broad, meaning make it super big. Cause you got niggas, man. Her booty, her booty too big, or her, or she, she can, or her, her ankle showing. This unseasoned, plain bullshit, bro. And I'm gonna get Genesis, Genesis 38. I'm gonna get the law. I'm gonna get everything. Cause I'm tired of y'all adding to the word of God, bro. Especially you damn Christians, you religious people, every damn body. Just because you don't understand the difference between being promiscuous, being a virgin, you don't understand that being promiscuous is an action that that does not have anything to do with aesthetics, bro. That's not deep. Quit thinking like animals. You all you damn humans. Because y'all want to limit people, especially you older ones. How is that fair that brothers and sisters got to take care of everybody? They got to work out. They got to work Looking like a meal, looking like a snack. Y'all want brothers to settle for it, some average ass shit. I'm not gonna get aroused off of that. So you telling me you finna be married to somebody you're not attracted to, but the Lord said become one flesh. How you gonna become one flesh? And you're not sexually attracted to your partner. Make it make sense. I'm tired of this unseasoned bullshit. That's not natural. When you look at peacocks, they flaunt their beauty, bro. Look at lions. They do certain things to attract the mate. Y'all don't understand attraction. You don't understand smoothness. Because you niggas are in gangs. You're fucking gay. You seek your daddy. You seek another penis. Everything you think about is men. That is gay, bro. Grow your balls. Grow your penis. No ditty, bro. But I'm tired of this homosexual ass vibration. This feminine ass vibration. I'm not settling for no Michelin man built ass woman. I've seen so many ugly women that were just as rude, just as evil as the promiscuous pretty woman. Goofies, you still have not understood the lesson. That they might render them more conspicuous and show themselves to be more eager than the majority to be reminded of the law of God. So you want to appear lawful, bro. Okay. So when you enlarge something, you magnify it. To get glory and praise. That's why Timothy, bro, that's why Timothy said, you don't, let's, let's get it again, man. It's too simple. That's why in like manner also that women adorn themselves in modest apparel with shamefacedness and sobriety. He's talking about work on your spirit first. Not with broaded hair or gold or, or pearls or costly array. And this is Timothy saying this. But I suffer not a woman to teach, nor to usurp authority over a man, but to be in silence. This is Apostle Timothy. Notice how he's saying I. Timothy is saying I. Learn how to read. Now let's get some more cuts. Okay? Proving that being covered up is not, does that does not make you godly, bro. 
Genesis 38. Genesis 38. Go to 13. And it was told Tamar, saying, Behold, thy father-in-law goeth up to Timnath to shear his sheep. And she put her widow's garments off from her and covered her with a veil, her face covered up, head wrapped, and wrapped herself and sat in an open place. Listen, look how this cuts, y'all. Okay, because y'all got to control women. You're not a shawdiologist. Y'all you, you, just not, bro. Y'all got no swag, no style, no nothing. You're just plain Jane, country unseasoned mo mofos, man. And sat in an open place, which is, by the way, to Timnath. For she saw that Shalah was grown, and she was not given unto him the wife. When Judah saw her, he thought her to be an harlot because she covered her face. Genesis 38 and 15. Let's repeat it for the second time. When Judah saw her, he thought her to be an harlot, a hoe, okay, because she covered her face. No, nah, Mata Shapiro, she covered her face. You carnal individual, bro. Okay, when you cover it, you conceal it, you hide it. Okay, secrecy. According to y'all doctrine, she's modest, she's righteous. No, nigga, he thought her to be a harlot. Showing you the customs of dress was not the same, and pants were not in Deuteronomy. They were not walking in the wilderness and through the, <laughs> the Red Sea with pants, especially when it wasn't invented until the 7th century in the Roman Empire. Pants were not, y'all can Google this, pants were not invented until the 7th century in the Roman Empire. They were garments. It was garments for women, garments for men. One West stanky as Rosicrucian's devils. Another cut. Let's get some more cuts, man. Because y'all think, oh, beauty is a sin. Genesis 30. No, go to 29, bro. Genesis 29. Go to 17. Leah was tender eyed, but Rachel was beautiful. No, nah, lust not after her beauty. But Rachel was beautiful. No, nah, she a hoe. But Rachel was beautiful and well favored. And Jacob loved Rachel. No, nah, Jacob, you're lusting after her beauty. And you're not focused on the kingdom. And you're not in my in my camp. No, nigga. And Jacob loved Rachel. And said, I will serve thee seven years for Rachel, thy younger daughter. Jacob, Jacob saw what he wanted and went to go get her. He lot he loved what he saw. He didn't sit there and try to extrapolate and oh my god, you know, she oh she she gotta be plain and no. Oh. The well favored man. It says a shape, comeliness, beautiful, fair. She was easy on the eyes. That's why in Song of Solomon, you go to eight, let's get some translation. Get, let's get the translation, bro. Song of Solomon 8. In 8, the young woman's brothers. This is in the poem. Look what Solomon said. We have a, for you underdeveloped pedophiles. We have a little sister too young to have breast. Like I said before, when you see a woman that's underdeveloped, we think of a little girl, bro. That's not aesthetically appealing. Just like if I'm overweight, if I got stanky ass breath, if I smell like ass, that's not appealing, bro. Let's use some common sense. The hell wrong with these people? What, what will we do for our sister if someone asks to marry her? See that? Let's go to Song of Solomon 8 and 10. I was a virgin like a wall. Now my breasts are like towers. She's saying I'm developed. My breasts are plump. I'm a woman. Look at nature, look at flowers, look at animals. Nothing stays the same. Y'all don't understand the nature of the Heavenly Father. When my lover looks at me with your eyes, he is delighted with what he sees. Is she is he going off? No. This woman wants to be wanted. That's in the Bible. Song of Solomon 8 and 10. I'm gonna, hold on, let me read that again, bro. I was a virgin like a wall. Oh, she's covered up. Oh, she's stiff and un she's plain. Now my breasts are like towers. When my lover looks at me, he is delighted with what he sees. But you unseasoned, paranoid, lames, you would try to be like, oh, well, Solomon still went off. No, Solomon went off because he had them heathen women around him. Get it right. Lame, I say, bro, y'all. Let's get that Esther 2 and 16. I'm getting all the cuts, bro. 
That's stupid, bro. Extra 2 and 16. I was a 14 and 15. Let me see, man. Esther 2 and 15. Now, when they turn of Esther, the daughter of Abihel, uncle of Mordecai, who had taken her for his daughter, was come to go in unto the king. She required nothing but what Haggai, the king's chamberlain, which is a eunuch, the keeper of the women, a true eunuch, appointed. And Esther obtained favor in the sight of all them that looked upon her. Why? Let's find out. Because Esther, Esther 2 and 17. And the king loved Esther above all the women, and she obtained grace and favor in his sight more than all the virgins, so that he set the royal crown upon her head and made her queen instead of Vashti. Right? Because Esther, matter of fact, I got, what's it? I got to find where it was, bro. Because y'all got to start with this unseasoned ass doctrine, bro. Hold on. Esther 2 and 7. And he brought up Hadassah, that is Esther, his uncle's daughter. For she had neither father nor mother, and the maid was fair and beautiful. Cut 3. She was beautiful. She wasn't some average looking woman. That these white women try to put in the damn screen. These Edomite women. Whom Mordecai when her father and mother were dead. Took for his own daughter. Let's get first. Samuel 25. And three. Showing you the women of the Bible were not ugly ass women. Now the name of the man was Nabal. And the name of his wife Abigail. And she was a good woman of under. She was a woman of good understanding. Understanding. And of a beautiful countenance. She had both. But the man was churlish, meaning retarded and stupid and evil in his doings. And he was of the house of Caleb. Cut number four. Let's get 1 Corinthians 11. For all you people who don't understand the 11th chapter. 1 Corinthians 11 and 16. Start at 15. But if a woman have long hair, it is a glory to her. For her hair is given her for a covering. Her hair is the covering. But if any man seem to be contentious or woman, we have no such custom. Show me in the law of Moses, the first five books. Show me in the Torah where the women were commanded to have head wraps. If anything, the Levitical priests were commanded to have metries and bonnets. That's covering your hair or head. But Paul even goes further. 1 Corinthians 11 and 16. But if any man seem to be contentious, like everybody is, we have no such custom, neither the churches of God. That's why in certain chapters, when you read Apostle Paul, like in 1 Corinthians 7, for example, because they'll read this. That's talking about the law, too. The whole book is the law. 1 Corinthians 7 and 6. But I speak this by permission and not of commandment. You have to know what Paul is talking about, what he's referring to, what law he's referring to. I'm tired of this, bro. Beloved got one life to live. Y'all just want them to be miserable like you. That's why I brought out Song of Solomon yesterday. Um, But even in, even in Proverbs 2, bro. Proverbs 2 and 16 is talking about a harlot. The strange woman when you go into the Hebrew. Because you guys don't have reading comprehension. A strange woman. It says, strange woman, prostitute, harlot. This is a sexually promiscuous woman. It does not have anything to do with her aesthetics. It does not have anything anything to do with her having a big booty. I didn't know women with big booties and big titties were the only females with vaginas. I didn't know that, bro. Profane. Okay, so a strange woman, a harlot, is profane. It's not talking about, brother, she beautiful. We just cut that, man. That's why in Song of Solomon, it says her hair radiates royalty. Damn. Let me get another cut, bro. Matter of fact, no. I'm going to go back to 1 Timothy 2. Because that word modest, modest goes into decorous. Okay. Let me break this down some more. So modest... 
XG 2887 Cosmios Cosmios So modest Thayer's lexicon related entry Cosmios Cosmios It says modest well arranged It says decorous of good behavior meaning how you act meaning what be a shouty Now decorous it says in keeping with good taste, not plainness, like you Spanish Gothic motherfuckers. So excuse the French. Not plain, like you Pharisees making your garment big as hell. It says proper, decent. Okay? Not according to this Roman ideology and his fourth kingdom. It's not what that's talking about. Okay? And what's crazy, apparel, it goes into the word garment. Why you think they why you think they say why you why y'all got them dresses on? Because the dress is not talking about the 21st century dress. It was talking about the garments, bro. But if it was supposed to have style. Now let's get the law. I'm gonna get Exodus 12, man. Okay. Exodus 12. When you go to uh 29. Let's go into the law. When our Hebrew forefathers and foremothers were in Africa and Egypt. And it came to pass that at midnight, the Lord Yahweh smote all the firstborn in the land of Egypt. From the firstborn of Pharaoh that sat on his throne unto the firstborn of the captive that was born in born. So like it, that was in the dungeon. Y'all can look this up in the Ipur papyruses if any pro-black Nimrod tries to uh, bother you. And all the firstborn of the cattle. When you jump to verse 31, and he called for Moses and Aaron by night. No, he said the whole nation. And he called for Moses and Aaron by night. Now the whole world, because I'm, I'm a pastor. And he called for Moses and Aaron by night and said, rise up and get you forth from among my people, the Israelites, the Hebrew Israelites, both ye, Aaron and Moses, and the children of Israel, the prince of the power, and go and serve the Lord, the God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. As you have said, when you go to verse 34, and the people took their dough before it was leaven, their kneading trolls being bound up in their clothes upon their shoulders. And the children of Israel did according to the word of Moses. Did the Lord punish Moses? No. And they borrowed of the Egyptians jewels of silver and jewels of gold and raiment. That sounds like style. That sounds like being decorous. He didn't, he didn't say, Pastor, down on you, on all you false prophets. He didn't say, your woman got to be plain and all. Oh, she can't clean her damn skin. All oh, she can't have earrings. No. But y'all are so undisciplined spiritually and morally that the apostles had to explain this like this. Most wicked worldly women, yeah, it's easy to use your booties and your titties for sexually promiscuous uses because you're very attractive. That's not deep. A man can do that too. It's levels to this, man. Amazon Lily. Go look it up. And the Lord Yahweh gave the people favor in the sight of the Egyptians. Did the Lord punish our people for having style and earrings and jewelry? No. So that they lent unto them such things as they required. And they spoiled the Egyptians. I mean, they took their stuff. Look at that Isaiah 3, man. I'm just, I'm just cooking. I am cooking this, this unseasoned doctrine, bruh. Isaiah 3 and 16, right? So outside of the Lord punishing the daughters of Shadis, I want y'all to I want y'all to see something. Before the before they got punished, look at this. And that day the Lord would take away the bravery of their tinkling ornaments. And the time period of Isaiah was like, I don't know what time period it was, but go look it up. Because you people have the doctrine of futurism. This is why y'all don't understand the Bible. And that day the Lord would take away the bravery of their tinkling ornaments about their feet. You will see a lot of black Israelite women with ornaments around their, around their ankles. And their calls and their round tires like the moon. Hold on. Let me get the Hebrew for round tires, bro. I think that's a... Uh... Hold on. Strong's H, 7720. Saharonim. Saharonim. So ornament, it says a round pendant for the neck. No, nah, sis, you got a you got something on your neck. You going off. That's not modest apparel. Let's see, man. Tinkling ornaments, an anklet, a bangle, stocks, 
the chains and the bracelets and the mufflers, the bonnets, right? Headbands. See that? Because we have, I, we have headbands. Why do you think even in sports, our women wear headbands, okay? Well, other women do too. And the headbands and the tablets and the earrings, bro, showing you that the daughters of Sarah always had this type of style. But the earrings, charms, and amulets. Which, why do you think I always say this, man? When a, when a, when a woman, when, when she when she on point, and I always say this, my my weakness is them hoops. Okay. Charmed. Enchantment. They noticed. That's why Timothy said, look, don't put your focus on the outward appearance so much, but instead, it should be the inner woman. Timothy was talking about your soul more than anything. Yahweh Shai Christ was talking about our soul more than anything. But you got women. Oh, yeah. I don't have makeup and I have a head wrap. You just, I just cut all that. The rings and nose jewels, the changeable suits of apparel, and the mantles and the wimples and the crisping pins, the glasses and the fine linen and the hoods and the veils. See that? So showing you, man, even back then, they were already wearing this type of thing. Let's get another cut. Let's get the Apocrypha. Let's get the Book of Susanna. Go to verse two. And he took. No, let's get let's get let's get context set apart from the beginning of Daniel, the beloved one, because it is not in the Hebrew as neither the narration of Bella and the dragon. There dwelt a man in Babylon whose name is like it in Babylon. Talking about ancient Babylon, not America. Look up King Nebuchadnezzar. For you one West Israelites claim a new covenant too, but you're trying to condemn me and other brothers when you don't know what you're reading. And for the sisters watching, for the brothers watching, so like it, this, this is just very irritating sometimes. And he took a wife whose name was Susanna, the daughter of Chalcias, a very fair woman. She was very sexy, beautiful. And one that feared the Lord, nah, she was going off because she was beautiful and she automatically a harlot. No, go be a Catholic ass, ugly ass nun. No, go be a, a wicked church goer with a suit and tie. And I think I'm better than you. But yeah, I'm eating pork, crab, shrimp, shrimp and lobster. I got 10 bodies on me. You're not a virgin. There's so many things that you're not doing correctly. And you celebrate other gods. How the hell are you women walking around here acting holier than now, bro? Huh? I don't know. Her parents also were righteous and they and taught their daughter according to the law of Moses, man. See that? Let's get another cut. Let's get Judith 8, man, because Judith was a widow. Judith 8 and 7. She was also of a goodly countenance and very beautiful to behold. Nah, she, she was ugly. She was very beautiful to behold. Nah, she, she, she too sexy. She was very beautiful to behold. And her husband Manasseh had left her gold and silver and men servants and maid servants and cattle and lands, and she remained upon them. That's why you fake cars are are using industry plants who will see your women because they have big boobies and you know, all they're gonna do is twerk. Man, be quiet. Judith 10 and 19, and they wondered at her beauty and, and admired the children of Israel because of her. And everyone said to his neighbor, who would despise this people that have among them such women? Surely it is not good that one man of them be left, which while they kept cutting off our penises in slavery, who being let go might deceive the earth. Burgess crew, man, stop talking, bro. Stop talking. I think that was in... Matter of fact, that was an eight too, bro. Hold up. Cause even in eight, bro. Um Judith eight. Cause it just it just shows you, man, like a lot of you a lot of y'all are projecting insecurities in the scriptures, bro. And it's not saying that. Hold on. Sorry, man. I'm cutting, man. Let me get this scripture too before I forget. Ah, uh, it's Ecclesiastes. A lot of y'all overly wicked, man. Ecclesiastes seven and seventeen. Be not over much wicked, neither neither be thou foolish. Why shouldest thou die before thy time? You strain that a gnat, swallowing the damn camel, bro. Take the beam out your damn eye, man. 
Let's get Matthew 21, 21 and 31. And I'm really defending the beautiful women out there because you got a lot of people, again, you don't want to eat right, you don't want to work out, you ain't doing no crunches, you ain't fasting, you ain't doing nothing to improve your sex appeal, nothing, bro. You just sitting up there and then you getting mad when a mate can't find you. So rock 13 and 15, each beast cleaveth to his kind, bro. I love pretty, slim, thick, athletic women. I like athletic women in general, but that's my type. Bro, the Bible says to cleave to your type. I'm like, I'm gonna get that again. Matthew 21 and 31, just to prove a point. Cause y'all don't understand this is not of our righteousness. Whether of them twain did the will of his father. They say unto him, the first, Yahweh Shai, Jesus, Lord Hosanna, saith unto them, Very last say unto you, that the publicans and the harlots, the hoes, go into the kingdom of God before you. For John came unto you in the way of righteousness, that new covenant, he, uh, he ushered in Yahweh Shai, and you believed not. So, but you got the garment on, you got the dress on, you built like a Chewbacca Sasquatch, but you go to church every damn day. Are you a gothic weirdo? Are you a damn wicked ass Catholic calling the pastor your damn your damn father? But the publicans and the harlots believed him. Why? Because they understood that Yahweh Shah was the mediator. They didn't just willfully keep going off, but they fall short, like we all fall short. And ye, when ye had seen it, repented not afterward. So they didn't repent not even though they had the big phalanges, big head wraps, and garments. Oh, I'm skinny, I'm virtuous. No. That ye might believe him. Let's say it, bro. Keep cut big cuts. Big cuts. Y'all wanna go to Jezebel and all kinds of stuff. But look how the Heavenly Father got style for our people and for all you damn nations. Y'all are ghetto, y'all are hoodlums. Exodus 28 and 2. And thou shalt make holy garments for Aaron and thy brother for glory and for beauty. The Heavenly Father loves beauty. We have similar characteristics for our Lord and Savior, huh? Exodus 28 and 40, talking to the men specifically. And for Aaron's sons, for you niggas, you got your head covered. Pay close attention. This is the Torah. Thou shalt make coats, and thou shalt make for them girdles, and bonnets, talking to the men, head covering, Ak, shall thou make for them for glory and for beauty. But you got you other nations of men. I don't understand why you guys wear your bonnets in the store. That's ghetto. That's inappropriate. That's unprofessional. Bro, what are y'all talking about? What are y'all talking about? Even the Lord told Job in 40 and 10, Deck thyself now with majesty and excellency. Why do you think these other races of women and people in general? And he's talking to the Hebrew Israelites that take care of themselves. They got style. We're set apart. And array thyself with glory and beauty. Okay? I might have to get that video after this, man. Um, let me get something, bro, because you Gentiles, I don't understand this, bro. Cause this, this came to my mind. Exodus eleven and seven. But against any of the children of Israel, should not a dog move his tongue? Because you got damn Spaniards in these whitewashed ass cities. You think we're the same people, which is why you think we're ugly. No, you're talking about these old Israelites who eat pork. That they don't work out. They don't keep no laws, so they're gonna look like it. That's not how we're supposed to look. But against any of the children of Israel, the Israelites, shall not a dog move his tongue against man or beast. That ye may know how the Lord Yahweh doth put a difference, we're not the same people, between the Egyptians and Israel, the Israelites, we're not the same people. And to back up the beautiful women, the Shaldis, you get Exodus 1. Okay, when you go to verse... When you go to verse 19... Look what the Hebrew women said. And the midwives said unto Pharaoh, Because the Hebrew women are not as the Egyptian women, for they are lively and are delivered ere or before the midwives coming unto them. Therefore God dealt well with the midwives, and the people multiplied and waxed very great, very mighty. Meaning they had lots of sex and multiplied, bro. Common sense. Why am I bringing this out? Because y'all want y'all want the Israelite women to be damn damn stiff, robotic, Hebrew one from beyond. All women are one from beyond, bro. Hebrew West, a descendant descendant of Eber. Okay, why are they lively, vigorous, lively, having the vigor of life? 
lively. When you go down here, of Hebrew women in childbirth bearing quickly, easily. Our women are very sexually powerful, naturally, if they understand the law. That's why, and it came to pass because the midwives feared Yahweh that he made them houses, man. And Pharaoh charged all his people, saying, Every son that is born you shall cast into the river, and every daughter you shall save alive. Okay? But just showing y'all, bro. Okay? They like, like, like. Y'all got to stop with this unseasoned nonsense, man. Okay? We just read in 1 Corinthians 11 and 16 that head wraps was not a damn law. Okay, just read what modest apparel actually was. All this stuff. Y'all are literally, man, her, her booty showing too big. Okay, get it. She gets a bigger dress. Let's say her shape is her shape is still showing. And she's wearing an extra large. Let's say she's actually in shape. That may be that may be how she's built. Y'all do realize dresses are flexible, right? They don't just stay in one damn place. Like, come on, man. Now, is it a sin to wear a head wrap? No. Is it a sin to enlarge your garments? No. But the Lord was saying, be cautious. Now, I'm not telling you, telling you to be provocative and extremely half naked. But for me, I'm a damn man. I know how to control my penis. I know how to approach a woman and give her a compliment. I do this. I do that. And I've been like that. I didn't need to seek my dad in the elder for that. And stop with this ungenuine marriages, bro. Y'all got, got the elders in your marriage. That ain't real love. What the hell y'all talking about, bro? You're supposed to make a, make your wife or your wives feel sexy and vice versa. That's how you become one flesh. Matter of fact, let me get that before I go, before I forget. Because you got Christians and people who don't read the Bible. They don't, they don't understand this. The book of Hebrews 13 and 4. Marriage is honorable in all and the bed undefiled. But whoremongers and adulterers, you will judge. Y'all still, still stuck on polygyny and damn monogamy, bro. So like you're not marriage, the bed, bed. So the bed, it says sexual intercourse, man. Paul said it's undefiled. The male sperm. This is why. That's why in First Timothy four. Okay, what's the second Timothy? No, 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 no. It was First Timothy five, I believe. Uh, 1 Timothy 5 and 14. I will therefore that the younger women marry, bear children. How are you going to bear children with a woman that you're not sexually attracted to? Make it make sense. Guide the house. Give none occasion to the adversary to speak reproachfully. Common sense. But, yeah, man, I got five minutes. That was just, that was just a quick cut session. Go work out. Dry fast. Loose the fat. I'm doing the same thing, okay? But what y'all not fit to do is projecting insecurities in the scriptures. And we just read how the righteous women who feared the Lord were very, very beautiful too. So stop forcing people. Oh, 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 hold on. Just like I tell these people in San Antonio, I said, bro, y'all too plain, bro. Y'all got no nothing to like. They don't give me problems. I just keep it 100, bro. No. Sirach 13 and 15. Every creature prefers its own kind and people are no different. One West Israelite, Judah Mac ass Israelite, everybody. I don't, I don't care who it is, bro. I don't care who it is. That's not, that's not what the Bible says. Stop with your violent ass mind. I don't care if your libido is super low either. Get some, get some vitamins. Just as animals of the same species flock together, so people keep company with people like themselves. See that? A sinner has no more in common than with, the, with, them with a devout person. Then a wolf has with the lamb. Wolf has the lamb. Ah, watch this, man. Now look at a peacock, right? When it mates, what is it doing, bro? It's flaunting, it's flaunting its beauty, its style, its handsomeness to attract the mate. You have to be attractive to the woman and vice versa. God is very masculine. He said be fruitful and multiply. That means knock down some doonies and have beautiful babies. Bless her, your quiver. That's not a sin. It's because you was a whoremonger in your past. Stop projecting, and that and that's witchcraft. That's sorcery. But look how beautiful this is, man. Man, y'all don't hear what I'm saying, bro. But with that being said, peace and blessings and shalom.
All right, look, on a side note, see, this would be considered, quote, unquote, too tight. All she has to do is get, like, a, a dress that's, that's a little bit bigger and just cover up her cleavage. That's all she got to do. She don't got to put on something super goddamn big, man. Oh, she beautiful. She's seen it. No, nigga, it's just a, it's a couple tune-ups. That's it. She's not deep.